All right, we are back. I know we started the Walk of Dead articles with um, uh, Scott Gimple. I, I'm still heated over... I made a video for uh, the Joker getting yet more controversy, and you get this dude who wrote an article talking about how dumb the movie was, and he picks out just the simplest superficial stuff going, look, guys, look, see how dumb it is. He thinks it's so smart. And he skips anything that has depth, and it's a dishonest article and I, I did a video I don't know when I'll post it but it's on my personal channel Ronnie Hayes I'll leave a link down below but anyway so I'm a little flustered from that still because sometimes it's just like we get why you hate it bro we get it but you're way off base forcing an argument just don't even speak if that's the case forcing an argument isn't going to work anyway here's the walking dead and Scott Gimple goes on to talk about Fear of the Walking Dead. Now, you guys know uh, I was pretty much done with Fear of the Walking Dead in uh, Season 4. I just thought it was really repetitive and whack, terrible, stupid, laughable villain. And um, then once he was like, oh, uh, and this is 100% not a character choice. This was 1 million percent. Oh, it's two different shows, so he can never go back. He, Morgan, which is a character I love, Jenny uh, Lenny James is an actor that I adore. Uh, he his performances are just packed organically with uh, so much emotion and charm. Uh, I want Morgan's character. I've always wanted him to live past his comic counterpart, and he did. And then they sent him to, sent him to fear. And then at the end, when we think they're going to start making their journey back home, which should have been the thing that they did, you can have them get caught in one obstacle after another. But just when I thought they were going to do the right thing and bring them on home, he was like, nah, man, I have no reason to go home. We're going to sit here and we're going to help people because this is a different TV show. I don't care what you have to do. Don't warp a character just to make uh, your job easier. No. Take extra time. Just let the moment sink in and figure out a way to get it so it's its own show. Yet they don't quite get to Alexandria yet. Anyway, so I washed my hands from fear. Then they brought over more crossovers with uh, Dwight. Um, and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to check it out. I started checking it out. It looked good. The trailer looked good. And it was a new record level of bad for me, for me as a fan. And it looks like it, it was that way for most people. Every time any Walking Dead site would make a post about fear, it was like 95% bad comments. So let's look at this article and see what Scott Gimple has to say about the, um, the path they're taking. So the interviewer, Dalton Ross, says, uh, when you look back at that season now, was what was your take on it? Is there anything you feel didn't work as well as you had hoped, or was this just a part of the plan, and this is the stretch of the plan that you need to go through to get to somewhere else? Scott says, right there, you just said it. Ugh. You've been lucky. Uh, we've been lucky enough on the show to be able to do these long range plans. Season five was about setting up this journey that these characters are on through uh, there to season six. And I think people are going to see the relationship between the two seasons. I think even at the very end of season five, the last few moments really informing the whole season about reaching benevolence and reaching for sweetness, art and just life and how the circumstances they're in. It didn't work. Uh, and how we leave a person that put that forward isolated, alone, bleeding in a dead town. Yeah, it's a it's a rough start from here. He continues, uh, I'm curious how people will watch that season in the future. Season two of The Walking Dead, when we did it, we were assailed in a lot of ways. Why are they on the farm? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? I think in subsequent years, people watching the season had different takes. This season five is a piece... Uh, just to interrupt, uh, my take has pretty much been solid for season two. I was frustrated with certain aspects of uh, being on the farm and having kind of um, um, a soft story there. But I was always, since day one, blown away and captivated by the uh, the human interactions between the characters. Still to this day, there's some type of charm that the actors have in their performance. And you can see they're, they're starving to do so much more. And now we know... There was a battle behind the scenes, and it hurt that season. They did the best with what they had. 
Could they have done better? Could they have taken it in a, in a different direction and done something truly amazing? I think so. If, if, uh, the behind the scenes stuff would have been ironed out ahead of time and the budget wasn't cut. If you don't know, they stripped the budget and AMC kept the tax rebate, which is something we see AMC doing more and more. I'm going to try to do a little bit of a, you know, investigation and a little essay about the uh, budget when it comes to The Walking Dead, but uh, until I get further information, what it seems like they're doing is they're leaving The Walking Dead on the strictest of budgets. That's why we always see them talking on the side of a road uh, d in the middle of woods. It's always the same repetitive, uninteresting backgrounds. And once in a while, we'll see like the one overhead shot or a landscape shot. And it's usually like one shot to kind of set up the scene. And then we see, uh, you know, smaller shots where they can fake some of that post-apocalyptic scenery in the cheapest way possible. And it seems like they really are leaving it on the strictest budget and then utilizing the money they're making off it to further the franchise with additional shows. And I don't think they take the budget from The Walking Dead. That's not what I'm saying. But I do 100, 1,000, 1 million percent believe that the profit they are making, which if you look it up, it is ginormous uh, with all profit from the show, the uh, merchandise and everything, the profit they are making, they are instead of bulking out the budget they're adding that money to make these other shows and to do these other gigs and all that and at this point in time i think that's almost undeniable that that's what they're doing anyhow so he continues and i so in long story short i disagree 100 percent with what he's talking about here i think season two works the well it works the way it does because of that charm and charisma and there's still some interesting character introductions there's still good story carl getting shot getting stranded sophia one of the most incredible and memorable moments even back then one of the most jaw-dropping heart-shattering gut-punching moments fear the walking dead that season didn't have anything close to that Character setup, character interaction, and any shocking moments, jaw dropping moments, it didn't have anything close. He continues uh, this season five as a piece of setting up. Wait, this season five as a piece setting up season six into a truly serialized entertainment. Is my brain warped or does that read like crazy? I think people might see their relationship and the journey, why the journey went the way it did. I was so happy with the way that, that everybody did. <laughs> Yo, this reads terrible. I think it really did come together in the end in this really tragic way that we couldn't have gotten to without the journey that we had been on. And again, this I disagree with. You take the end of where they're at. It's literally them uh, mixed with a bigger group. It's a, it's a new saviors with a new type of Negan. And uh, they're separated. You're telling me you couldn't do that in a more interesting way? You couldn't get there? And I think he's doing his job. He's supporting the franchise. He's the chief content officer. You never show weakness. You never admit defeat. I think he's doing his job. He's doing it well. And But I'm here to translate that. Yeah, it was a weak-ass season. We promise we're going to try to do our best moving forward. I don't know if I believe that, though, because you got the same writing crew. And I don't believe with um, us demanding they should fire people. I don't believe that one at all. You want to keep the same writing crew, they better bring it. Because what, what they have brought so far, I don't know if that works. The Outsider. Fear has many faces. Oh, you know what? That looks good. Tonight at 8, 9 p.m.? Oh, yo, I'm looking that up. If that's the case, I, I got to sign into HBO. I got that free with my cable, so I could just go watch that. It's funny you mentioned season two of The Walking Dead because I remember the complaints during that. But as soon as the barn doors opened, everyone was like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, right. see there. But there was no barn door opening moment in Fear the Walking Dead. It was culminative. I think everybody's opinion is as long as their opinion is come to honestly nobody's opinion is wrong it's how they feel about what they consume but the one aspect that could potentially 
temper it is just taking the whole of it together. It is asking a lot of the audience to do that, though. It's an interesting thing that we face. And if you look at The Mandalorian, if you look at a lot of shows on Hulu, and I think what Disney Plus is now going to be doing, they're showing shows week to week. It is interesting. It's a challenge. And I think people will continue to have because the story might not go the way the audience wants in the short term, but it's all towards telling this grander story for them in the long term. I hope that anybody who had an issue with it can see this upcoming season and see how that it led to this but it's because of uh, always the plan and to tell story in, in serious contrast now here's the thing i do want to mention this and speak on this because i feel what he's saying here however there's a there's a big difference fear the walking dead season five wasn't fun it wasn't interesting it wasn't enjoyable it wasn't good bad dialogue poor characters now hold on that's not definitive, and that's not for the entire fan base. That is, um, for me, and a big majority of viewers, even viewers who are barely clinging on. There's your own fans. When I look at the posts, your own viewers, current live viewers, are saying, what are we doing, bro? What is this? And here's the thing. I, I, I'm a little nervous with his observation of, a show that has many stories week to week. Now, this is some law and order shit where every week it's a new criminal, it's a new mystery, it's a new yada, yada, yada. That used to be a big way to tell stories long ago. But then when when uh, TV evolved, now we got these long running stories where uh, you can have Negan, for example, on The Walking Dead. And his story has spanned so many seasons and it's a longer story so many seasons, so many episodes, it's a longer story than Negan just being the highlight villain for one episode, which is something that he's um, not outright saying, but he, he's, you know, he's brushing up on that possibility that in the future we're going to see some Walking Dead content that is weekly. It does have an overall theme. Like, you got Baby Yoda, where's he going for Mandalorian? What are you doing with Baby Yoda? But you have the, the mini... Um, this happens and then that happens for each episode. And again, in a way, The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, they do do that, but it's on a really loose basis. You'll have your important moments in the episodes, but it's not as defined as shows like Law & Order. That's like def super defined. It's right there. And in his defense, it's episode by episode might not be that interesting, but when you see where excuse me, where all those episodes stack up and the story they build up from that, that seems like what he's saying, that, oh, you're going to appreciate it more because where it goes. And again, my argument stands is that they could, the next season could be amazing, but what we see, what we saw and what we rewatched for, for a big chunk of us fans, it's not interesting and we don't want to watch it. We don't want to rewatch it. How much do you pay attention to modify or pivot because of critical feedback? And again, this is where it gets tricky because when I first saw the anything for the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix, I was against the time period. Well, no, I was mixed. I was against the Waynes, Bruce Wayne being in it. I was against the look of the Joker. I was like, that's not, you know, gritty enough for me. I was nervous about the casting, but I love Joaquin Phoenix. So there's a little mix there. I was super negative with the Joker when it was first being shown. And I'm glad Todd Phillips didn't go, oh my God, you know, Ronnie Hayes is super negative. Let's change it all. Uh, and that works sometimes. Sonic, that was perfect. Anyone who says that they never should have changed, you're an idiot because it's going to make more money now because it's better now. Objectively, for the majority of viewers that are watching it, they made better improvements. With the Joker, they were confident. They had it. And when you see the performance and the character and everything, it's going to tie together and make you appreciate it. Now, I want a Joker representation in figure form, statue form. And it's more than just that, that surface level look. It's the depth of the story and the enjoyment you get from it and the performance and everything going on. And that's what you think of when you see these statues, posters, artwork, um, prints and signed stuff. Now I'm like hyped. I love the look, especially when he does the blood. That's my favorite moment. If I can have a Joker with his arms out and just with the blood, one day when I get good at sculpting, I'm going to do that. So the same thing for here. 
is I would be weary how they pivot, but there's stuff that they need to take into consideration. Like, okay, uh, a lot of fans find the characters bland. Oh, that is something you need to change. The dialogue, the, um, the interactions with pointless characters, random kids helping all the time. It's getting to be a frustratingly uh, repetitive uh, non-story, but it's always stuffed in there. Uh, it's a tricky thing because, again, as long as somebody is coming at their opinion, having watched the show, and as long as they have an open mind to start with, anybody's opinion is valid. One of the reasons, and he's not wrong, one of the reasons I don't read them is because it's endless, right again. It's not, okay, I'm going to read this person, this person, but I'm not going to read the other 15 articles, and these people have the mic. It's not quite fair, nor do I think it's storytelling with integrity to just seek out what people's criticisms are and address those criticisms without looking at the whole of the audience. And does online criticism represent the entirety of the audience? It is the same sort of demographics that are issuing those criticisms that are watching TV, just as far as their interests or their history with the show or any of those other things. Wait, hold on. Let me just check that again. This online criticism. Okay, yeah, because, mo you know, you never know if the online criticism is going to represent the whole of the audience, and that's almost never true. But you can definitely see some uh, areas that need major improvement. When you get the majority of your audience saying, bro, I, I can't slog through this. There's no weight to it. The substance is gone. It's like, you know... Um, yeah, you need to add to that. Make some changes. Pivot a little. It does online criticism represent uh, is the same sort of demographics you're issuing. Uh, yada, yada, yada. And you know what? To connect to this, uh, my comic, Doomsday Kingdom, there was actually a criticism that uh, we see uh, a character get thrown off a building. We see another character. Uh, there's bodies hanging from trees. And, uh, you know, people are hanging them down this whole street just filled with bodies. And one of the criticisms where we get all these little peaks and that's it. There's no backstory to it. There's nothing happening after that. And uh, it's the same thing with The Walking Dead show. It's the same thing with uh, long running stories. You get these peaks and that's because when we circle all around uh, within the story, you're going to get more added on to that. You're going to get more knowledge, more reveals. So then uh, at issue five, uh, you're not, you know, you don't, you got all the setup, but by issue 15, you're going to know why the bodies are in the trees, who did it, why, how does it affect the plot, the story and the neighborhood and what's going on. Same thing with the body coming from the roof. Again, it's a random thing to give that chaos of the downfall of society, but there's also something where you'll get a reveal later, so you're not left just hanging there. Some things will be just reveals and storytelling. I'm sorry, will be just left uh, ambiguous in storytelling, but some stuff and a lot of stuff does have like certain reveals because it's a setup and payoff, and sometimes you just got to wait for the payoff. Same thing with Fear of the Walking Dead here. Um you're waiting for the payoff, but when the when the payoff doesn't feel like it's too meaty, you, you just wonder, what was it even about then? Anyway, people are saying awesome things about the show. Wait, and it works both ways. People are saying awesome things about the show. I also don't think it's like reading that and be like, oh, yes, nailed it. I don't think that's fair either. It's a tricky thing because I don't want the feeling that we're ignoring it, but also I don't think it's wise if you print them all out and try to address everything. He's right there too. It's tricky. Uh, when you have to pivot, it really is. It's just not telling a story with integrity. I mean, would we have told episode 905 and 906 of The Walking Dead the way we did if we were just full of worries? If we were just trying to make sure that we weren't taking a risk and ensuring that everybody in every sort of quarter would be happy with it, with the outcome with Rick going, which was happening either way, by the way? Yeah, and I mean, he's right there. That's tough to do. When you have to pivot, that's a really... Um, tough task, I would imagine. I'm not writing for a TV show. So how do you decide in terms of when to creatively pivot or change course? It's getting kind of a long video. You guys let me know if you like these. If not, I'm probably... Uh, we're well, we're not even doing much more than this. It, I shouldn't have started with these. <laughs> I like talking about it if you guys do. I truly believe that it, it is our job as storytellers to take risks and to do the unexpected and not just to shock people. I want to take the stories in different directions than to have gone before. In taking those risks, the only thing you're risking is the audience's interest or their opinion of you. There's a lot of people out there who don't want to do that. 
who just want to go down the center path and ensure that there's nothing for the audience to be upset about. Uh, if you're truly serving the audience, if you truly care about the audience, if you're trying to give them something different, you have to take risks. I think this is when I get a little more conflicted about what he's saying here, because I don't think there was any risks taken. Part of my critique was the fact that you guys keep on Fear the Walking Dead. You keep repeating what we've already gotten. I'm sorry, but where's the risks there? Well, where is the risk? I know it could be hard and I know that people can be upset and you don't want to, to upset people. You don't want to make people sad in perpetuity, but also don't want to just give them a story where you didn't try your best to do something special, unusual, something that they might remember the rest of their lives. If we're not taking risks, we're not serving the audience. We're just serving ourselves. We're just serving Oh, what happened there? Making sure that no one's upset with us. To really serve the audience, you got to put your neck out there. I'm very proud of these showrunners who have been taking incredible risks. And I've been standing right beside them every step of the way with it. And sometimes pushing those risks forward very much myself. And again, here's something where as a fan, I'm sitting back thinking like, yeah, I, I get your position, what you're doing, what you're saying. But I, I'm sorry, man. Where's the risks? A part of the criticism was the repetitive, we had this on The Walking Dead and we're doing it again. Why? It's actually the thing I like most about the franchise. Even when you guys were pulling the most insane numbers in the history of television, you were still doing crazy stuff. And he says, um, what can you say about this point about what you all have planned creatively for season six on Fear? I don't know how much has been shared yet, but I'll share a little of it unilaterally. Structurally, the show is going to change quite a bit. There's going to be a great deal more focus within the stories, a little less uh, vignette in telling 16 little movies. It, the guys are out of the gate wonderfully with the first two episodes, and it is differing. It's a differing, um, differentiating thing. It's something that separates the show from the other two stories. Uh, telling these 16 little movies being a bit more anth anthetical, anthological. What the fuck is wrong with me today? It's, uh, it still is serialized, but it's told through these very focused perspectives. I think that's, he's talking about bottle episodes. I'm pretty sure they did mention that before. I think that's going to be something that the audience really digs. <laughs> You're in for a rude awakening then. There's these episodes like Al and Isabel and June and Dory that were super focused episodes. Okay, I'm trying to pinpoint what he's saying. I'm When he says super focused, I'm pretty damn sure he's talking about bottle episodes. And fans fucking hate them. That were some of our favorite stories to tell and we're leaning into that a little more. That's something we're very that's very exciting. Just what these characters are dealing with is very unusual to anything that we've seen on the shows. Last season... There was a sing sing singularity or uh, of purpose, which is all these characters landing in the place of needing redemption. These characters are going to be in very different places now, and that's going to add to the variety of storytelling. The conflict between the characters and the drama that springs forth from that. Yeah, there's a whole lot of words here with a, a whole lot of nothing being said. I'm sorry, but different, different place, doing different things. Everything's different. And here's the thing. Okay, they're going to be in different place. Okay, so they're separated. They're living in little separate communities. Yet um, they're under the control of like a, a, a newly formed government. You know, it's their own whatever Ginny is, her own little government. I'm assuming that's when he says different. Okay, so it's instead of the saviors letting people go back to their own communities you're living with the saviors now and that's how it sounds and i could be totally off base with that but that's how it sounds i was talking to your showrunners about that uh finally coming together and now at the end of season five everyone's split apart that was after they couldn't be more together and more on the same page really just going down the same path completely they're on a lot of different paths now and that creates problems and it creates these very intense reunions and that's another gimmick that we're getting sick of uh they like to do the emotional reunion because again that's it that's something easy and that's what i mean when i criticize them saying we're doing this again it's easy to separate characters and do a reunion. Well, we saw them separated in The Walking Dead after the prison. 
Uh, what was that? The first reunion outside of small ones? Um, yeah, after the prison, wasn't that one of the first big reunions? I'm trying to think because in the comic it was different. It was the bar, the barn. They did a different type of reunion. So there was a mini reunion when we got split up for just an episode, and then there was Andrea, the reunion after being separated, and then we had the Walking Dead where it was like reunion with Judith and Sasha with Tyrese and yada yada yada. And then we've had other reunions, mini ones, like Maggie when she thought Glenn was dead. And that reunion, that, I thought that was pretty damn amazing, even though that gets a lot of hate. I thought the way it was filmed and they did the psych out with Glenn and then they did this new psych out where you know, Glenn is in trouble and you think, oh my God, they might really kill him here. And then Abraham saves his ass. I, I like that. I still like that. Anyhow, this is something they've done. And it's getting old and it's getting redundant, but we're seeing this again. With Fear the Walking Dead, I think it's even more redundant because we see people go uh, together, separate, together, separate. How many fucking times are we going to do this? Every season, there's characters being ripped apart and then we get this reunion. Oh my God. Someone, please, if you if you can bear it, count in Fear the Walking Dead how many times characters have been separated and then how many times they reunite. Because I think it's overwhelming at this point. Anyway, when you talk about um, intense reunions, could one of those intense reunions involve Sherry? There's another one, you know, it could. And it's already confirmed that, yeah, she's on the show. Um, because I'd asked the Commonwealth was part of the CRM. What about this group of Ginny that took everyone? Are they related to the CRM? They are not. That's an example, like when we talk about the Commonwealth, when we talk about Ginny, that is a rich and interesting story, and it's big. Saviors, again. We can have World Beyond touch upon it and actually sort of be living in it, and yet it still has this very different life in the movies because, okay, so that is the movies. I meant the Fear of the Walking Dead. Because obviously Rick was on one of those helicopters. However big that story is, we don't want that to be the story of the Walking Dead. And again, I agree with him here. As a fan, I think that stuff is going to be super cool and people are going to dig it. But The Walking Dead is The Walking Dead, fear is fear, and yada, yada, yada. It's not like they might not touch upon it again, but it's super important that they have their own stories. We're developing other mythologies like the CRM within this universe. And this is sort of the first mythology, but there's going to be more. And again, I, I do agree with that stuff he's saying. How long is this article? There's not a lot that's being like said, said like concrete stuff. And I don't need I don't need spoilers, but geez, I was talking to your showrunners, blah blah blah. Okay, so I already did that. Sherry, uh, do you envision a time jump on fear? That is something we're planning and playing around with. Time is actually going to be played around with on this season of Fear. Yeah, who knows? I would love to be like Crisis on Infinite. Okay, so that's just a roundabout way. But yeah, way down the line. Uh, when you say time is going to be played with, we're going to see a lot of time pass, he confirms. There is a lot of time that can pass, yeah. I don't know how you can have time for anything else, blah, blah, blah. And this is... So more Walking Dead stuff down the line. Oh, absolutely. We were working on a big push of something I was working on originally. And then I got much more focused on the show in my first year on the job and developing World Beyond and getting the movie going. We really want to come out with different TV formats, meaning shorter things and then some event series, limited event series. I'm trying to get together with a number of different things that we can show at different times during the year. This focuses on characters we miss and we lost. It focuses on aspects of the new mythology. It focuses on stories that occur in our universe and have nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with the shows or the movies that are just little zombie tales that happen in our world with our rules, our timeline, but are just really great zombie stories. Really great stories of the end of the world. I've been working on that with a variety of people, and that's actually proving to be uh, super fun and interesting. Uh, you know what? I I'm going to put my... Um, I'm going to put my uh, money where my mouth is. Hearing that, I'll do I'll – because do, in the industry, and I know they don't take uh, um, unsolicited scripts and pitches and whatever. But just for fun and on the channel, just because I do a lot of critiquing, I'll put my uh, money where my mouth is. I will, over the next few months, put together, or maybe quicker, a little pitch script idea. And I'll put it on this channel. And then I'll find a way to get it to Gimple and 
boom, I'll put myself out there. Whether it's absolutely terrible or you guys love it, if they're doing little zombie tales, it wouldn't hurt. It might actually, if it, if it ended up being an interesting story that people liked, it might be a fun little um, promotional plug to have AMC be like, oh yeah, our fan had this great story and we'd love to make it and we did it and here it is and it's like a, you know, a little 45 minute thing. So yeah, sure, I'll put my money where my mouth is. You guys will get the major chunk of it without the ending or reveal. I don't know. I'm not going to show it all, but you guys will essentially get a snippet of it. It'll be something we do for fun on the channel. I'll even write it down so I know to, for sure to work on that. And uh, then you guys can critique me for a change. There, writing it down. Done. Anyway, what about filling in some backstories for characters? That's exactly what we're doing. I mean, it isn't the only thing we're doing. It's not like everyone uh, is in Gotham, but one. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so yeah, essentially, this is stuff we've already talked about before. They will be doing some backstory stuff, some origin stuff, uh, Neeg and Governor. And these are all potential possibilities. This isn't stuff that is already lined up, not that I know of, and they're already doing it, but this is probably stuff that they can do tons of uh, uh, options are open. And I have talked about this in sh live streams where they can make a mini 45 minute clip of Glenn. Recently, I talked about him and Maggie going on a run. And by the end of it, it represents um, him telling Maggie, no matter what happens, maybe he almost dies on that run. And he's like, no matter what happens, I need you to be strong and, and push on. She can make a joke about it. Like, oh, uh, whatever. I'm not going to you guys get the idea. I already ran through this once before. And then by the end of the thing, it flashes to current day. And this is kind of like Glenn in a backstory saying, listen, I, I want you to be happy. And then when it flashes to current day, that'll connect to, you know, season 12 of the walking dead as an example. And that'll be when they introduce her new love interest. And it can connect to the fact that Glenn wants her to, um, to live on, even if he was to go, he doesn't want her to shut down and shut people out, uh, but to open up and, and essentially uh, be happy and, and um, raise their child or whatever you do within the story. And that, again, you don't have to do exactly that. That's just a small example of stuff they could do um, uh, character wise, characters that are dead and origins. You guys know, I don't need to explain that. The governor, Negan, I think those would be cool. And also random stuff that's not connected. You heard them. It could be anything. Just great zombie stories that they um, that fits in their world with their rules, and that they think would be fantastic to create for I don't know AMC Premiere, Netflix, AMC itself. Again, they could do whatever they want. They got three different options right there, and they're not all going to be movies. Obviously, if it's a short webisode it'll likely appear on um, amc premiere first maybe jump over to netflix maybe bounce over to uh um the amc channel anyway so that's the article with fear there's another article i'll slog through it but please let me know leave a comment do you guys even care these are a bit long rambling let me know i'll try to keep the next one i think it's the last one short and to the point all right i'm done talking thoughts and opinions in the comment box it's your turn. I screwed that up so bad.